Some of you might remember uh, a movie that came out in the early 70s. I was a young university student. Uh, the movie was about Francis of Assisi, called Brother Sun, Sister Moon, by Franco Zeffirelli. A beautiful movie. I remember seeing the movie in the midst of the month of January and being so enthralled by it, being so moved by the spirit of joyful simplicity and poverty that Francis manifested. I wanted to go out and kick my shoes off and run through the grass, but you can't do that in Ottawa during the month of January. <laughs> but um, somebody once said, after having seen that movie, that it portrayed uh, Francis as the first hippie. You could say that this whole idea of the anti-establishment man, the man who uh, shuns wealth and power and prestige and chooses instead to live this life of poverty and simplicity and brotherly love. That doesn't go far enough. Even I didn't get it completely when I saw that movie. Because Francis did not choose poverty and uh, simplicity. Francis chose Jesus. If Francis embraced poverty and simplicity, it was in order to imitate Jesus, in order to be closer to Jesus. That's not what really struck me when I saw that movie when I was 20 years old. But the more I meditate on the life of Francis, and of all the saints, the more I'm struck by the great sense they had of proximity to Jesus, the source of all life, the light of their lives. The first reading we listened to this afternoon was one of the most beautiful readings in the Old Testament, at least for me. It tells the story of the Jews coming back home to Jerusalem, and as they are planning to rebuild the temple and rebuild Jerusalem, here they are for the first time gathering to celebrate a liturgy of the Word, and they listen to the Word of God being proclaimed, and they cry. Why are they crying? They are crying because in listening to that word, they have a deep sense that God is there in their midst, that God is reaching out to them and touching them, that God is with them through this proclamation of the word. And in the gospel, Jesus sends out uh, these uh, disciples to go and to bear witness to him, and they do so, and he tells them to do it in poverty and simplicity. But they do it because in meeting Jesus, they have touched God himself. Jesus is God's word alive among us. The word that had touched the Jews 500 years before is now alive in the midst of his people. It is the living word of God that has touched their hearts and changed them. And it is because they've met him that they go out. It is because Francis met the living Word of God, Jesus, that he embraced that life of poverty and of simplicity. And we are invited to the same encounter. We are invited to the same meeting, a meeting of hearts. Jesus comes to us, still today, in his Word. And he comes to us in his sacrament. He comes to us in so many different ways to reach out, to touch us, to heal us. We are invited to encounter the living Word of God, Jesus, and to let our lives be transformed by that meeting. Please stand and join me in prayer. A year from now, today, a synod of bishops will be gathering in Rome to reflect on the Word of God in the midst of the church's life and as the source of its mission. Let us pray for those bishops who will be reflecting on the Word of God, that the Synod be a source of renewal for the whole church. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray for the Jewish people who still gather regularly to listen to the Word of God that in that listening they might be strengthened and nourished and renewed 
and be faithful to the covenant God has established with them. For this we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all the followers of Francis, in particular the vowed religious, Franciscans and Capuchins and poor Clares, who still today live out the call that he felt so many centuries ago. For them we pray to the Lord. And let us pray for each other, that our hearts be open to the Word of God made flesh, that our lives might be transformed by that Word empowered in our hearts. For this we pray to the Lord. God our Father, to you we entrust these prayers and all the prayers that lie silent in our hearts. And we entrust them to you in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, your Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.